Hello, ladies and gents. I'm the Rev, and this is Rebel Galaxy, the money-making episode. I'm going to show you guys what to do and how to make money real fast in most situations. So, I'm going to break it up into sections. First is going to be the first thing you should do, and mining. Then we're going to move on to what you should do at the stations. And then we'll probably finish up with upgrades. So, of course, check the description below if you don't want to sit through the whole video. And maybe there'll be a trick or a tip in here that you guys can learn from that will help you out. So hold on one second. And when we come back, like I said, I'm going to show you the first thing you should do once you hit the game. So hold on. All right, guys. So first thing you do, anytime you run to any of these debris fields, not mine, not mining, not asteroids, but debris fields, right? You can see all the garbage floating around in the sky here, bits and pieces of ships fly in the center of it, hit your scan, and you're going to find a whole bunch of valuables. See out here, we got a cargo container. Now this one happens to be a little later in the game, so it's a minefield, so there's mines everywhere. But, first thing you should do is basically fly station to station to station, and every single one of these fields you see, stop. See right there, six grand credits, tacky salt. That was just one. Normally, when you hit this pulse, there'll be three of them. You can see over there it says detected valuables. Accelerating to sublight. Engines at maximum. Oh, Ordnance crate. Ordnance full. And then we got one more here. Accelerating to sublight. Disappear on us. Nope. That's the second thing. So, the second thing that you want to do while you're out running around, if you come across these message transponders, you want to do them. They're going to be one of a few things. They're either going to get, show you where all the pirates are, they're going to show you the local market conditions, or they're going to show you the uh, a special drop where you fly in and there's a bunch of ships and you can pick up whatever drops there. Or, the last thing they do is they will tell you about a special mining opportunity. So let's hit this one and see what it says. See if I can do it. There we go. Tip about a spectacular... Uh, here we go. Spectacular mining opportunity near the Page City. You'll want to move fast, though, as opportunists won't be far behind. So that's perfect. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to... Um, what to look for when you're mining in an asteroid field because you still want to hit everything. So hold on folks, we'll be back once second. Alrighty folks, so real quick, we're going to do what you should do when you see ice fields. Hit your pulse, right? And anything that pops up like this one here, and you gotta make sure you have a mining turret on your ship. This is one of the reasons why I always have those. Mining turret. Anyways, you see that? Pure water. And you're only going to want to hit the, the mineral source ones that do this. Now, it's different in the regular mining, which we're doing next. I just, I ran into an ice field on the way and it was on the list to do, but you just want to hit the mine up low resources. Whenever you hit an ice field. Now that water can sell anywhere from 20 to 40 credits, 40,000 credits, sorry. And there's one of us, Mine that guy. Let's see what we get this time. We should get something. Broadsides. Yep, it's just hiding behind that little, there we go. Flip for that time. Not bad, you know, again, one of the things you can sell for a couple of G's, and you can see there's more of them here. But hold on, when we come back, we're going to do that mining mission. I'm going to show you guys exactly what to do, so hold on. Alrighty, folks, so after you kill off anybody that's messing with you, and we've got a tug over there we might have to fight, what you always want to look for are these right here, right? See this one I'm going to blow up? Those are the ones that you always want to shoot for. Pulse turret. 
You don't want to waste your time with any of the asteroids, just those. See, this time we got diamonds. Gold. So, anytime you're flying through an asteroid on a mission and you get stopped all of a sudden, take a quick scan around, see if you see any of this stuff. Optinium. More Optinium. More diamonds. Yeah, little dude with your little laser, you're not gonna hurt. Alright folks, so there we go. Those are the first things you should be doing as you're first going through. You're doing the various, um, you know, you can either start the main story or if you just want to farm and, you know, beef your weapons and your ship up, those are the best ways to do it. Just as you're flying around and stuff. Now I'm going to show you, um, we're going to take and we're going to do stations. I'm going to show you guys the trading and the stuff, uh, the things that work the best. So hold on a second and we'll be right back. Alrighty folks, so the next thing you're going to want to do as you're running around is you're going to want to be buying and selling. So you go into our commodities market and white price <clears throat> is the normal asking price. Red is under market value. Green is over market value. So we're, since we don't have a whole lot of green here, I'll just tell you guys from everything that I've seen as the game progresses and as you go what you want to do. So. The Tachyon Salt is a great one. I've seen that one double and triple in price. Gold, on the average, is um, it's okay, but you're only going to make a few thousand at a time versus ten to twenty thousand on the Tachyon Salt. Metric Diamonds, another great one. Um, you'll make anywhere from ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Just depends again on the situation, and we'll we'll talk about the situation in the stations next. Pure Water, another fantastic one. Um, does really well in um, most things and you'll get 20, 30, 40, 50. Space slaves are okay. I've seen them go anywhere from a few grand to you know up to 20. Bio waste, you're always talking hundreds, not thousands. Live organs, anywhere again from five to 25,000. Uh, religious tracks, as you can see, they're pretty low. Soy paste low, nuts and bolts. Ceramic McPlating is kind of a toss-up, so as data cubes and robots, ammunitions, most of them. Um, narco color, you see that one a lot. Not really worth the risk. Now, designer clothes, this is another one that if you see it down low, you know, and what I'm talking about seeing the things low, where you can make 5 to 25, 35, 50 Gs. I'm talking anything from 10,000 to 15,000, nothing over 20,000 because you're cutting too much into your profits. But designer clothes, at this price, I wouldn't buy it at 15, but I'd buy it at 10. Alien artifacts, this one does phenomenally well. If you can find these in the 20,000 range, buy them. 30,000 range, only to, a, I wouldn't spend more than 30,000 tops. But I've seen them go anywhere from 40, 50 to 60,000 selling. Grill whiskey is another toss up. Now, the pro progenitor shards, always, always keep your eyes open for those. If you can get anything under um, 100, I would get it. 100,000, in other words, you know, if you see them for 60, 70, 80, you probably won't. These and the face of uh, Gonzo, Gozo. Normally you get those off of missions when you're when ships are blowing up. So anti-matter spec, that's another one. You'll see that usually in missions or when other things, you know, things blow up. Rarely do you just see those. I don't think I've ever seen one in a station for sale. So there we go, folks. Just a quick rundown on what you what to do with the marketing. Now the next thing we're going to talk about real quick is the situation on the stations. So, 
you go into your map. Stellar map. And you see all these exclamation points, right? We got Tech Boom, Corian Siege, Mining Rush, Another Invasion, Famine. And then the other thing, right? So with those, you want to look for two things the most. You want to look for or a few things. Um, mar market glut is the first thing you want to look for because everything will be a, uh, low price. You can go in and make a killing. If you can find market glut and famine in the same system, you'll make a crap ton of money. So market glut and then famine, they buy everything. War is usually pretty good as well. Um, anytime there's a uh, an invasion, if you can get into the station, you'll make a lot of money. But that's the whole point. It's it's surrounded by stuff. So, tech boom eh, is not really worth messing with. The other one that you want to look for, there are a few. Um, it'll talk about if you look here um, to the on the right of the screen where it says status. It says normal. The things in that one that will change that you want to look for is impoverished, war. Those two usually mean improv, impoverished, and war. Usually mean that they're they're great selling. It's a great time to go in and sell stuff. So your water, your salt, things like that. Um, if they have a big celebration, because they do have ones with big celebration, that's the other one. That's where you want to take uh, diamonds and other such things. A war, you want to take diamonds too. So those are basically the different situations that are pop that you want to keep your eyes open for so every time you go into your screen you know every time you go into a system look and see what's what if you see market glut go right there if you've already got a full hold and you see famine or war you go right there sell off your stuff you'll make a killing so alrighty so the next thing up we're gonna talk about are upgrades and then the best missions so hold on one sec and we will hit upgrades Next. Alrighty, folks, we're going to do upgrades now. As you're going through, of course, the whole point of the game is to upgrade your ship. So, what I always like to do is we'll start with uh, broadsides. I know a lot of people like using the lasers um, for the broadsides. Personally, I use the tachyon cannons because you can get up close, and if you watch any of the videos that I do, you'll see I rapid fire, and you can just, as long as you're close, you can kick a ton of damage out. That's what I always use. For the secondary, it's always heat-seeking missiles, so that no, you know, whenever I hit the button, they're going to go, and they're going to actually home on to something. They're not just going to fly off and hit an asteroid or something. And then, of course, I've got my turrets, and what I usually run with is at least one, if not three, of the alpha turret of the sorry mining turrets. And you can see they only got 2,600. Uh, meters for range, but that's close enough. They're the ones that I keep targeted so that as um, I'm flying in, in combat, I can target whatever I want to. And the lasers are phenomenal. You see shield penetration 125, hole penetration 100%. So they work great. And as I start getting extra turrets, I'll put on swarm turrets. And again, great distance. All you gotta do, they will, you can hook them on to, set them to fire on only certain things. They usually set them on capital ships. Works fantastic. And then, if I've got more extras, I'll use the MK Pulse turrets. You can see 3200 range. Normally, I set these guys up to do the fighters. Because um, as you get higher and higher, more and more fighters start coming in at you. So you're going to have to start dedicating things to fighters. I've found it works better than just trying to do it all yourself. So I'll show you here real quick how to set your turrets up. Hit your start button, and everything starts with any craft, right? So all you got to do is put it on targeted only for the ones you want to do targeted, which for me it would be the mining lasers are both on targeted. And then uh, when it comes to the heat seekers, most bang for my buck, I want those always on the capital vessel so they're constantly firing, getting the shields down so I can get in and hammer on them. And then like I said, the pulse turrets, as you can see, they are on fighters only. All righty. <clears throat> so hold on one second, folks. And we're going to do some, I'm going to show you what kind of missions or talk about what kind of missions we're going to do next. So hold on one second. All right, folks. So mission board. So... 
Doing missions is a good idea. The ones that you want to stop with, start with are all the death drop missions. And of course, I picked a station that doesn't have the missions I want to show, but I can give you guys an idea. So they're going to get things like Seek and Destroy. This is um, on my bad guy save, so we've got us going after uh, citizens, miners. Uh, he's got a batch of antimatter anyway, so it's a Seek and Destroy. Now, we'll get to that one in a sec. Same thing again. Another Seek and Destroy. And, and another Seek and Destroy. Where you're all going to places and blowing stuff up. Those are okay when it comes to money. You know, you've kind of got to get deeper and harder missions. So as soon as you can start pushing the harder missions, that's what you want to do. And as you push those harder missions, the thing you want to always keep in mind is... When you go into a mission area, normally it'll drop you in the center and everything will come at you at once. Immediately go to the outside, circle, and just start killing stuff and working your way in and doing your best to put yourself where you're only attacking one capital ship at a time after you've blown up all the fighters. And if there's like two or three capital ships, make sure whichever one you're attacking, the side you're on, there's no other attackers. It's the other side of the ship where the enemies will be. Uh, it's hard to visualize, but that's usually the best tactic in things like that. So the death drops are the ones that you're going to want to run the most because you just fly in somewhere and grab it. And then the dead drops, there's death and dead. Dead drops are where there will be a package and you fly into a center of it. There's a bunch of enemies. You fly in the center, tractor beam it in, and then you fly out of there real fast. Those are usually the best missions. And then Seek and Destroy. Lots and lots of Seek and Destroy. That's what I prefer. Stay away from any of the escort missions. Those are going to get you killed, and they're a pain in the butt to win. So like this one right here. Um, yeah, see, keep those capital ships alive, and we can dip into the kitty for a hefty 1.5 mil. Yeah, no thank you. Unfortunately, with the game, with the way the game's set up, there is you can't pull back far enough to see enough of the battlefield to know what ships are getting hammered. So that just stay away from them. Any of these protect the protect whatever ships. Stay away from them. and then the escorts where you're supposed to take a ship from one you know one place to another and you're protecting it. Those are a pain in the butt too. Sometimes the ships get lost. They're just not worth it. So, there we go. Those are the best missions. See, I got a few in here, too. We got a Checkmate one. And these are mostly uh, set up for my extreme series, so they're all a bunch of hunt and kill missions. Which is personally, you know, what I like doing. You know, the dead drop ones are fun, but I'd rather run, go in and kill things myself. And, uh, you know, do it in a mission. Because... And they're the most profitable, actually, to tell you the truth. These guys right here are the most profitable because the more of the big ships you blow up, the bigger the ship you blow up, the bigger the cargo container, it has a chance of dropping. They don't always drop, but when they do drop, I've gotten uh, level 4 and level 5 um, weapons and level 6. In fact, that's how I got the shields for this. Uh, in both playthroughs, the shields that I have... These field impact shields. You see everything else says MK3, Angus. No impact shields. That's because I got this off uh, one of the um, Seek and Destroy missions where I, you know, I blew up a big ship and got that. So, cool. All right. So, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, what kind of components you should get, when you should get them, and how much that will help you out. So hold on one second, and we'll do components Alright, components. So the things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to components. Your booster. This is what's going to get you out of situations. You used it constantly. Out of all of them, right? There's sublight, and there's a normal one, sublight, null grav. I, li I like the slamjet. And the reason is it's got good acceleration. And it's got 
fast acceleration, which is the whole point. I mean, you really, you know, you can get out of an area quick, which is good. Of course, you guys understand, you know, the whole warp drive thing. Um, cargo extenders. Now, you have to be part of the Merchant's Guild to get the cargo extenders. Get them. It'll save you so much time and trips going back and forth. I have the largest one here. As you can see, it's a uh, hundred, or it's twelve, right? Yeah. And then we've got smugglers, or sorry, small car small cargo. And you know what? Those four will make a big difference when you first start out. So of course, go join that merchant's guild. Smugglers hold. So if you're playing the bad side, um, when the capital ships scan you they won't pick up if you've got narco cola or the slaves or any other stuff that is illegal medium large and then medium smugglers hold and there is a large I think smugglers hold as well so there you go tractor beam everybody knows about jump drive you've got to get that to get out of the first system the sooner you can do that the better because then you can start going and hitting the because once you do that once you can go to any of the other systems and you can start you can go if you if you're brave enough and go around and hit all the debris fields and ice fields and make a bunch of money okay so first thing you should probably get is heat management it's going to make it so your weapons can fire faster in a shorter period of time. Definitely, definitely something that you want. The second one is probably, you know, I don't use it. In fact, I didn't use it. You guys can see it's not turned on here. Um, but it, it, you guys saw the speed of it before. It really slow. I mean, it makes it go about half the speed. So you might want to think about the hiking spike. Um, those things are usually, you know, good ways to make money. And then from there, you know, it's it's whatever you think it's going to help you. As you start getting into anything above, anything that's got heavy armor, or basically above medium, I mean, as you, as you get it above, like, the first four levels of ships, after that, you're going to want to get the maneuvering booster because the thing's turn horribly slow okay and then and I've experimented with a lot of these the other one you might want to do next would be the either the turret optimizer where it makes it so things can f um, reduces the reload time right so things will reload and then fire faster on your solid things not lasers but missiles things like that or turret extender which increases the range of all your projectiles by 25 percent that one I would probably say would be the best and then as you keep going up I mean with those right there you can pretty much hammer through the game you got your detail scanner if you like being a pirate and you hit every single you know ch opportunity and chance it'll help you find active bounties uh, stuff with cargo the missile optimizer and this one the good thing about this one is it does all of your like my swarm missiles and it does all of the secondary missiles which are heat seekers as well versus oh what was it yeah, versus this one that just does the reload times just for your turrets. So the one down here, you get both um, turrets and side ports versus the just the uh, the turrets. Okay, so about halfway through the game, you want to really save up and you want this deflection. This right here will make it so you can beat the game in pretty low level ships. All you have to do is get um, all your weapon systems, shields, all of those things up to level 6, deflection absorber, and you can go in and you can beat the game. You don't need one of the dreadnoughts to beat the end of the game at all. 
but this deflection absorber definitely is my number one pick a must have as soon as you can afford it to get it get it it will save you so much time from being shot um, blown up you'll be able to do harder missions make money faster that would be my pick of all the components you definitely want to get never used the repair bot never saw a point in it um, fault tracker didn't use it didn't do the ordinance targeting either or the nebula mitigation and then like I said turtle accelerator heat turret extender turret optimizer hacking spike missile extender all of those all of them are interchangeable um, must-haves heat management deflection absorber maneuvering booster those three must-haves and you can beat the game with them so all right guys <clears throat> I think that is pretty much it those are all the tips tricks and other such things that I have learned playing this game as always please smash that like button if this video has helped you out at all or if you just liked it in general please favorite subscribe all that good stuff as always I am the Reb uh, this is Rebel Galaxy, my little tips and tricks. And thank you for watching. And remember, keep your heads down and your guns up. And I'll see you real soon.